Hey everybody, I'm Amber Ryan and welcome to my channel. Uh, today's video has been in the making for a few weeks now. Um, it probably should have been out last week, but it wasn't, so here I am. <laughs> uh, actually, since working on this project, uh, my hair has changed colors. That's how long it took. Um, <laughs> so today's video, I made uh, two Coraline uh, dolls. One of them is a little me or a mini me is what they're called. Um, and then the other is supposed to look like Coraline herself. So um, I actually saw this. Uh, apparently this was a trend going around on TikTok and YouTube uh, early last year around this time. Um, like around this time last year it was just a trend going around. I never saw it unfortunately but I have always wanted to make a little Coraline doll so uh, it was really fun and I really tried my hand at sewing because I other than doing a little bit of hand sewing I have never done too much sewing at all. Um, I've done some hand sewing, but that was about it. I had never used a sewing machine or anything like that. So it took a lot <laughs> to pull this project off, but I feel very accomplished and proud of myself on uh, what I created. And I hope you guys enjoyed this journey and struggle of making these dolls. Uh, they were just really complicated. Um, by the end of it, I did learn a lot. Like, I experienced a lot. And I, you know, I did struggle quite a bit. But I worked my way through it. No matter how frustrated I got with it. No matter uh, how challenging it got. I actually tackled it. I completed it. And I was actually happy with the end result. So, I'm very proud of it. And I hope you guys just enjoy uh, the journey of seeing me uh, make these dolls. <laughs> I, Coraline is just one of my favorite movies and I am so happy that I actually uh, tackled this project and yeah so here is the video of me creating a couple Coraline little me dolls and I hope you guys enjoy it okay and here we go with this video um this is the fabric i ended up using for this project um and all of this supplies i did get at either hobby lobby or i borrowed from my grandma um so i got the fabric and i pre-made some wire armatures which was the first time i'd ever done that uh, just to make the dolls a little bit more poseable uh, these patterns are from another youtuber called Scribblebug. Um, I will leave a link to her video in the description down below so go check her out. Uh, it really helped a lot to have those patterns. Um, I also used polyfill to stuff the dolls. I ended up not using uh, the no fray however I did see uh, other youtubers use that on other videos um, and of course I had uh, buttons and charms to put in their hair and uh, yarn for their hair and some pins to hold everything together so that was just a quick run of all the materials I used to make these dolls uh, the video went by really quickly so hopefully you guys caught everything in the voiceover I was trying to talk fast but uh, yeah so here's the first step of the dolls um, I basically the patterns I got from Scribblebug I downloaded and printed off I made them as big as I possibly could without making them like a multiple page because uh, I wasn't so sure uh, not you know being well uh, adverse and sewing uh, I didn't know how much seam like uh, she did make a note on the patterns thankfully uh, you need to have a seam allowance because when you sew it's gonna make the uh, it's gonna make the doll just a little bit smaller around the edges so you need to make sure that you're not making your doll too small or too big it, it gives you a kind of an estimate on how big you want your doll to be so I did them as big as I possibly could because being an inexperienced uh, sewer I just wanted to make sure I had a little bit of leeway uh, because I knew it would be a big learning experience, which it was. <laughs> so I did them as big as I could and I sketched the patterns out onto the fabric. And of course, cutting those out. <laughs> did you like that little quick transition? Um, and then I pinned them together to make sure uh, they would go uh, right up to each other. So when I went to sew them, uh, you know, they would already be where they needed to be uh, and there wouldn't be any slipping. Uh, 
However, since I'm inexperienced, when I used the sewing machine to go sew the dolls, um, the pins ended up uh, not working out for me because they would get in the way and I just was so inexperienced. So I ended up taking the pins out anyways. And I didn't show me sewing the dolls because, well, it was a hassle and me learning how to use it. So I was so stressed out and frustrated with it that I just didn't film it. Um, which I kind of regret, but um, yeah. So here's me uh, pulling the dolls inside out. Uh, and then I ended up doing some more stitch work on what other stitch, uh, what any of the stitches that came loose uh, while I was doing that. Um, and then I also made like these uh, extra face pieces to make the nose more dominant. I saw another YouTuber do this, so I decided to try it because I wanted the noses to be a little dominant. And I think it helped just a little bit. Um, however, it didn't make it as dominant as I was hoping, but then again, I didn't really know what I was doing either. I was completely winging everything, so, um, and I honestly couldn't find the video of that YouTuber again to even tell you guys where to go to look for her video. Um, and she was the only other person I saw make the dolls completely out of fabric. Uh, most other people, uh, ended up, like, sculpting the heads and then doing the body fabric, uh, but I did the dolls completely fabric on this video, and I did contemplate because I do want to sculpt, um, however, I have never really sculpted before, so I decided just to play it safe and tackle one thing that I had never done before, um, instead of two. So, <laughs> I stuck to sewing and fabric. <laughs> Uh, now I stitched the mouth on and uh, the buttons, uh, so I knew where they were going to be placed and everything. Um, and these armatures are completely optional. I just did them because I wanted the dolls to be a little bit more poseable and so you can manipulate them to kind of sit or lay down or, you know, do certain poses. So I actually forgot to put one in the doll and I had already started stuffing it and I, was, I realized luckily I'd only filled one, stuffed one leg and realized I left out the armature so I had to go back <laughs> and do that. And I had also stitched all of the, like I didn't leave any open gaps to stuff. So if you decide to make these yourself, make sure you leave some little stuffing holes uh, on the legs and the arms so you can easily stuff those appendages because they were really hard to stuff um, and you, I couldn't get any stuffing into them uh, without having those little holes and then stitching them up afterwards. So uh, there was quite a bit of hand sewing with this project to the point my hands hurt and uh, but it, you know being so inexperienced it you know is kind of anticipated <laughs> um, yeah so here I am just stuffing the dolls um, around the armature and I think the armature actually did help you can pose the dolls they actually sit up um, if they're leaning against something they actually sit up and you can like lift their arms to a certain position to a certain extent um, so I think they turned out to be really cool but yeah, here I am stitching it up, and I actually used like two different stitches, uh, like two different kinds of stitches, and I, for the life of me, I don't know what they're called, but uh, you can probably see them uh, close up here, but I used two different stitches because one just wasn't cutting it, so I tried a different method, and it helped a lot, and it really made it go by quicker uh, to do that stitch, so I wish I knew what the names of those were, but... <laughs> So there I am, I'm still filling it, 
and the fabric I should have used that no fray glue but I did not I saw other youtubers use it and I went ahead and bought it um, and then I ended up never using it because I didn't really know what I was doing and I didn't know how that would help anything um, and I think they originally just used it for the clothes anyway uh, but the fabric did fray because I did mess up stitching a lot and had to pull the thread out and then try again it was honestly just a mess <laughs> it was chaos <laughs> it took forever to and here I am working on the clothes. I am doing the same process. I'm cutting out the patterns and these are the patterns uh, from Scribblebug as well. She did uh, the clothes and the doll. So she had patterns for everything. It made it so easy. Um, I literally downloaded, uh, blew them up and then printed them off and there they are. So I'm just cutting those out and then I do the same process. I pinned them to the fabric of choice for each item of clothing and then I cut them out and went from there. And I Luckily at that point I had become uh, well in tuned with how to use a sewing machine, how to rethread it, and how to rethread a bobbin, and it was just a big chore learning that. And so by the end of this, I was actually pretty well experienced on how to use a sewing machine and hand sewing as well. I did a lot of both, and I feel a lot more experienced in both fields. So I'm actually pretty proud of myself for challenging myself to do this. And I know I've mentioned it in the intro. I probably mention it in the outro. Um, but yeah, I was very proud that this was a big, big uh, challenge for me um, because I hardly ever sew. So <laughs> it was interesting. Um, it was kind of a live and learn lesson um, because I didn't look, I didn't, I watched like a few tutorials on YouTube of people making these dolls, but I kind of just skimmed through some of them. Uh, because and most of them weren't even showing like them sewing it or anything so it was just kind of difficult for me to figure it out and I finally decided that I would just figure it out for myself um, and it kind of do the hands-on <laughs> experience because that's how I learn and uh, yeah so and all these fabrics I found them at Hobby Lobby and uh, they were 30% off at the, at the time and I got either a yard or two yards of each fabric depending on which fabric I think uh, the white one I ended up getting two yards because I didn't know how much I would need figured I would use it for other projects too if I needed to and then I got a yard for all the others because I didn't actually know how much I would need. So I got a lot of fabric and hardly needed any of it. So uh, maybe for future projects though, right? <laughs> um, but I was so proud because I found uh, a couple, you know, fabrics that looked very Coraline aesthetic. Like the stars and that swirly fabric that right there. Um, like that screamed Coraline to me. So it was absolutely perfect. And uh, I was very thrilled to find those at Hobby Lobby on a whim. So, yeah, <laughs> it was kind of uh, this project. If you are used to sewing and you have like scraps of fabric and you already have all this stuff on hand, it would be a really cheap project to pull off. And you would probably get it done pretty quick because you probably know what you're doing. <laughs> um, but for me, I had to pretty much buy everything um, from the beginning when I decided to do this project. And I think I spent about $70 altogether at Hobby Lobby uh, to get all of the supplies. So, which isn't bad in retrospect when you realize all of the stuff I bought. Um, in including since I, how much fabric I got and that they were 30% off. But still, it was ridiculous. Like the... I got a complete spool of black thread for six dollars which was insane <laughs> when at Walmart you can probably get it for a dollar but I don't go to Walmart so <laughs> and yeah so here I am just tracing out uh, the patterns of uh, the raincoats so, uh, so I did decide to do two different dolls in this video one was to represent me and be my little me and then one to uh, look like Coraline herself. Um, so for mine, I decided to change up the color scheme and everything uh, to be more like me. <laughs> so for her raincoat, I decided to do a light uh, lavender purple color because that is my favorite color. 
and so for her raincoat I decided to do that light uh, light purple color and uh, and of course for Coraline I stuck to the original classic bright yellow um, I'm surprised that Hobby Lobby had that color in fabric but I found it <laughs> So those are the raincoats I'm currently cutting out and the real challenge with the raincoats was really the hoods. I, I didn't, couldn't figure out for the longest time on how to attach those to the raincoats. Kind of had a like, uh, it was kind of a hit or miss and figure it out for myself. And here I actually show some sewing <laughs> of the clothes because at this point I was more experienced. I had a feeling I knew better of what I was doing and I felt more comfortable to film a little bit of it. Not much, but I did film a little. And uh, yeah, I was just a little bit more confident. And I even left the pins in when I sewed these and had no problems. Um, so that just shows how much experience I gained uh, throughout this project using a sewing machine. So I was very proud of myself uh, by the end of this that I was actually uh, more comfortable and I still know how to thread a sewing machine now and thread a bobbin so I, I definitely learned a lot throughout this project let me tell you. <laughs> So also, for my doll, uh, I decided to do, uh, I believe, the swirly pattern, and for Coraline, I stuck to uh, the star fabric because she had a star shirt on in the movie. Hey everybody, I honestly just wanted to pop into this video and kind of go through my thoughts, I guess, uh, so far on this project. Now, this turned into a much bigger project than I originally intended it to be. Seriously thought it maybe maybe take me a couple of days, maybe three max, to complete it. I have been working on this project since at least early Sunday morning and it is currently Wednesday night uh, so uh, it's definitely taken me a lot longer uh, than I thought it would. Um, I honestly thought I would just blow right through it, it would be easy almost and clearly it was not. <laughs> Uh, this has been a very challenging project for me, uh, mainly because I never sew. Uh, this is my first time ever using a sewing machine. Uh, now I have hand sewn before. Uh, I've never, never been great at it, but I have done, you know, hand sewing quite a bit throughout my lifetime. Um, definitely have gotten better at doing both throughout this project which I am super proud of myself for and I'm super proud of myself for even tr attempting to do this at all uh, considering I have hardly any sewing background whatsoever um, and I'm also very grateful to uh, Nanny my grandma to uh, lend me her old sewing machine so I could uh, make these dolls so I'm also like just very grateful to her for uh, uh, she, she taught me how to originally thread the sewing machine um, and I wish I had paid closer attention because the very night that I started working on this project and I started sewing with it I instantly needed to rethread it and uh, everything she taught me just flew out so I had to figure it out for myself on how to rethread it uh, because I just didn't want to bother her anymore with it so uh, but I am very grateful she lent me the sewing machine um, yeah so at this point of the project I've already started I am almost done like I've almost made it to the finish line on it I am super proud with it so far I'm super excited to be done with it um, and I've honestly been working <laughs> like since I get home from work um, to the time right before I go to bed um, so and you know doing this throughout the week I do have 
uh, work early in the mornings so it's not like I can stay up all night working on this project and I only have you know limited time to work on it so uh, which is why if you guys see videos of uh, if you guys have been watching my let's play of Ravenhurst 3 Escape Ravenhurst I am literally recording those videos in between working on these dolls because I knew I wouldn't have this video done in time uh, by Friday and I'm hoping to be uploading uh, once a week on Fridays so don't hold me to it because but I'm really going to try hard this year to upload once a week at least and I kind of wanted to start doing let's plays anyways uh, you know every now and then because it's just a fun little break and chill time for me and they're honestly really easy videos for me to make so and they're really fun so I hope you guys are really enjoying that series and I hope to continue with those um, but yeah, so if you were wondering how I got this project done in a week, uh, so far I haven't. Um, if I have it done by Sunday night, uh, it would would have been done in a week. But uh, yeah, and I'm hoping honestly to have it done way before then. Um, I honestly was so close to finishing it tonight, but I just couldn't. And I... You know, I may include this in some of the voiceover of this video, but I just want to cover bases with you guys right now. Um, my hands had hurt so bad. I believe it was Tuesday. I still worked on the project. I still worked on the project, but my hands had hurt so bad, I guess, from doing all the hand sewing the night before. So I even went to work. I even took, like, the arthritis uh, pain reliever. Didn't help whatsoever. Um, so it did no good for me. So my hands had hurt really bad. And uh, just mainly in the joint area and the muscles in my hand, just right through there. And uh, so I had never experienced that before, which was crazy. But uh, my guess is because I was hand sewing quite a bit the night before uh, working on the dolls. So I was like, I think that was the night I was trying to, yeah, it was last night. I was closing up the dolls and my hands had hurt so bad. So luckily today uh, they have been back to normal and uh, luckily also I was able to use the sewing machine for most of uh, this part of my project. Now I will have to hand sew a little bit more um, just because I'm not confident enough with the sewing machine to get into the tinier areas of the clothing. Um, but yeah, I'm currently so close to finishing the little outfits for the dolls. Uh, the dolls the dolls. <laughs> the dolls are almost completely finished themselves. Uh, I do have some finishing touches to do. Um, I am going to have to use some acrylic paint to do some finishing touches on the faces and I'm going to paint uh, the, whatever color the hair is going to be on their scalp so you don't see the white uh, cloth fabric peeking through the hair. Um, so hopefully the hair will like blend into the scalp with the paint. Um, and then, of course, attaching the yarn hair uh, like what Coraline has. So I'm honestly just so excited to finish this project. And it's been like a big challenge for me. But I'm super proud of how they're turning out. Even though they're very messy, uh, they definitely look very wear for tear. <laughs> and I don't think they will hold, like they wouldn't hold up to constant play, of course. But really, they're just... Uh, going to be sitting here <laughs> for me to look at. They're kind of going to become decoration pieces, but um, yeah, I've tried a lot of new things with this project. I feel like I've accomplished a lot. I'm very proud of what I've done and uh, definitely have gotten better with both hand sewing and using a sewing machine. So I've learned a lot and uh, that's basically you know that's a big part of creating stuff you live you learn and uh, it's all about the experience and having fun creating something and really enjoying it and just putting <laughs> all your passion into into uh, making something to share with you guys and that's you know really the big fun part for me is all not only making the things but also sharing them with everyone so uh, this is not going to be a, a sewing channel by any means. Um, I honestly don't know uh, if I'll sew for quite a while after this, but um, 
yeah, I have learned a lot. So, uh, the dolls themselves are completely sewn up and they're ready to be closed. They're ready to be painted and hair attached and they're ready to be finished. So, I don't have much further to do on the dolls themselves. It's just finishing the clothing. So, which I'm going to have to hand sew a little bit on. And, um, yeah. But I'm really excited to just finish the outfits and from there it should be just pretty simple finishing touches. Um, yeah, so honestly I just wanted to throw this clip into the video because I know I haven't been filming as much as I hoped throughout this process. Uh, mainly because it was super stressful at times and very frustrating at others. And uh, you know I was also just very nervous about using the sewing machine and I've finally gotten a little comfort more comfortable with it so um, with the outfits I did share a little bit more footage of doing those than I did the actual dolls so <laughs> but anyways I hope you guys are enjoying this video um, here's the rest of the footage of me finishing them up and I will see you guys at the end of the video so <laughs> let's get back to it <laughs> And here we are, we're getting close to the end, uh, getting closer and closer to the finish line. And I am, I honestly have never painted on fabric before, so this was a new experience as well. And I didn't really like how that turned out, considering, you know, other people were sculpting the heads, so it was easier to paint on and they could manipulate it and do whatever they want. Whereas on fabric, it's real, you can't really blend and you can't really manipulate that and redo it. So uh, it was kind of like a one done kind of thing. <laughs> whatever you do, you're stuck with. So, um, I'm, and I'm also like the heads turned out really flat. Um, I should have like, uh, I think I should have done it like a little bit more 3D. Um, maybe do like a couple side pieces to the head uh, to make it a bit rounder instead of flat and uh, so it does look a little strange uh, including with the hair the hair was a big challenge to attach um, I used that uh, E6000 glue that was the first time I had used that um, did not enjoy using it at all but I did I have seen people also use like rubber cement instead of that glue and uh, I mean you could probably also use hot glue I would almost advise to do that I think it'd be easier but uh, yeah so that was fun And I even attempted to make little rain boots, which uh, I did not make for Coraline because I ran out of time. And by that point, I was just done. My hands hurt. I was just done sewing. And I was over it. So, and I just honestly just didn't have time to finish it in time for this video. So, um... But yeah, so I made a little rain boots for mine that matches the raincoat, and I think they turned out decent. Uh, they looked okay, and you know, at least she didn't have like bare feet, so I thought it was kind of cute and a little, just a little added bonus. Um, the hair was just so messy. It was such a big challenge. I, d I thought that was going to be like one of the easiest things to do. I thought it was going to be satisfying. I was really looking forward to it. And all the other videos I sh uh, watched said it was like really easy and it was satisfying to watch. Um, it was not for me, but I also had a fabric head instead of a sculpted one too. So that probably played a big factor. <laughs> And here I am dressing the dolls finally. Uh, we are reaching that finish line and they look so cute. I'm actually really happy with how they turned out. Uh, they look like a mess. They definitely look very uh, like an inexperienced person made them. Um, but yeah, and I think this is me. I decided to add like cute little pocket details uh, to the jeans and to the raincoats. So here is me um, making, uh, um, cutting out little pockets and yeah. And then I cut them out and I just hand sewed them onto uh, the raincoats and uh, the butt of the jeans. <laughs> and yeah. I really wished I had done the jeans better. Uh, they did not turn out very well, unfortunately. But I did find this great uh, dark blue fabric that almost looked like the color of jeans, so I chose that. 
and uh, the pants just look strange to me um, I tried and tried uh, you know several different ways on stitching them and all of that and it didn't go well so <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I think they turned out super cute. Um, <laughs> not at all how I planned or thought they would turn out, but I'm actually pretty happy with them and I tackled a lot of obstacles and I'm, you know, proud that I even got something done. Um, I struggled a lot and at least something came out of it. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with them and I am ready to get back to painting honestly. Sewing just isn't my thing but I hope you guys at least enjoyed the video of me challenging myself to make these dolls and yeah I hope you guys just had a good time watching me struggle and uh, yeah so I will see you guys next week with another video. Bye!